All right, Tony, they're tuning in from around the corner, around the world. And we need to figure out how to hit the mute button. And we need to figure out how to hit the mute button. All right, let's see, Tony. We'll hit the mute button, and I'm going to join you here in a second. We'll lower the volume. How about that? From what I understand, Tony, for the very first time, we are going to be live on both Facebook and YouTube. As you sit there going through your notes, isn't this something? So we, I don't have the Facebook feed up in front of me, um, but I do have YouTube. So if you're on YouTube, send us a message. Look, we got Rick B. Rick B. is one of your neighbors. You made a drawing for him once up in Maine. I forget. Rick, who did Tony draw for you? Larson is here again, as what usual. You, let me put my glasses on so I can see what you're talking All about. Right. Well, no, you made a drawing. You drew something for Rick once. I forget what it was, though. I probably drew him. It wasn't him. I know that. Kevon Runnels is here. Now, Tony, if they ask, do you have any artwork available tonight or no? For sale. Much love from the Stephen F. Austin Sonic Boom Marching Band here in Houston. I remember you, Kevon. I remember you mentioning that before. Well, Tony, uh, what, well, it's, you got a limp biscuit there. Tony is going to have some art available uh, right there. He's got that beautiful Jerry the King Lawler, oh, 11 right. by 17 drawing. Now, Tony, how much are the, uh, the drawings going to be tonight? Oh, uh, $40. $40. $40. $40 signed and shipped. Tony's got some beautiful art tonight. Plus, I'm going to show you something that's going to knock your socks off. We are logging in, Tony, just a couple of minutes early, so the fans are going to be a couple of minutes behind us. Uh, Tony, when are you and Thunderbolt Pat Patterson going to reunite? Nice drawings from Patrick Garman. Are you and uh, Thunderbolt going to reunite anytime soon? I'd rather reunite with Tommy Wildfire Rich. You love Tommy Rich. Tommy Wildfire Rich was my best tag team partner outside of Rocket Johnson. Derek Gutt asks, hey, Tony, who do you think would be a good subject for Dark Side of the Ring? I think Tony's story would be good. Never mind. I know you were already on it once for Bruiser Brody, but I think you would be a good subject for I, that no, show. No, I no. Think, I think there's thousands and thousands of wrestlers that never got the opportunity to, uh, to, uh, tell, to tell their story. Uh, Ole Anderson would, would, would be a, 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 a good pit. Uh, you know, any wrestler that had a lot of turmoil in their life, you know, uh, and, and it happened to uh, a, a lot of wrestlers. So Dark Side of the Ring is, a, is something that they could do forever. All right. You know, because so many wrestlers, you know, what put me on Dark Side of the Ring was the, the murder Brody, of, right. uh, yeah, yeah, the murder of, of, of Bruiser Brody, where, you know, they did the Von Erich and stuff. And it did uh, Brett uh uh, uh they did the, the, Hitman. the screw yeah, job. Yeah, yeah, the hitman heart, you know. But I think what should be done on the back side of the ring is something that nobody ever thinks about. Never thinks about. And that is the wives. The wives of Brett. The wives. Well, you know, nobody interview and your friend here. I got your friend here. John Cena. Yeah, I, got I wish we had a way where we could kind of display all the pictures at the same time. No, they, they can see it. You know what we should do, Tony? Why don't I decorate the back? You want me to do that? Do what? You want me to put the pictures up against no, the No, because they're too far from the camera. See? Look look on the camera. You see how far it is? But then that way you could display all oh, of them. Well, it's up to you. It's up no, to you, Tony. No, I'm only like, trying to now, help. Now, this is something very, very special. Now, here, this picture here, you're going to alter this off. The reason is... This is Tony Atlas and who I just talked about, Tommy Wildfire Rich. Wow. Now, what do you notice about that picture other than, than, than a drawing? It's autographed by Tommy Rich. Right. And it's not a copy of his autograph. It's that is original. Tommy Rich original, original autograph. And I'm going to start bidding on this at 50 bucks. Now, this is Tommy Wildfire Rich. So whoever bid the most money, we get not only Tony Atlas autograph, but also Tommy Wildfire Richard. As soon as you buy, I was saying right here. Now, wrestling fans, I want to know if you are watching. No, I'm saying here. You're saying there. 
Wrestling yeah. fans, if you're watching this right. on Facebook. Ah, da, 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 da. <laughs> Look at me do, baby. I'm good. I'm good. Look, I'm on the side right you're here. Right Watch my finger move. If move you're... fingers. If you're watching this, ah, on, I, didn't do it. I told will you. Will you please let me speak? Boy, go ahead. If you're watching this on <laughs> Facebook, come on over to YouTube if you're interested in purchasing any of the the autograph drawings that Tony has. Simply because I don't have access to the Facebook page right now. We had a laptop we were going to be using, and the laptop kind of went kaput. So we're watching YouTube on a big uh, HD TV right now. So if you're interested in the drawing. Or if you want us to be able to respond to your messages, come on over to actually. You know what I'm going to do, Tony? Can you hold court for a second? I'm going to go put a message on Facebook. Can go you, ahead. Can you be the boss for a second? Yes. Can you behave yourself? Boss. Can I trust you? No, no, no. I'll be back in 30 seconds. Okay. All right, fans. Now, now what I got You can here, talk to them, Tony, too, you, you know, brother. Talk to the them. the Undertaker. I got the, the Undertaker. See, sir. And when I was in Japan, I had the honor of wrestling the Aaron Sheik. See that? I wrestled Aaron Sheik. Now I know if y'all y'all probably didn't notice, but uh, 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 the Aaron Sheik. Uh, if you look here, you see a signature that with, with his signature. Well, what he did, he signed uh, uh, one of the copies for me. So when I made more copies of, of this drawing, uh, his signal was on it because he signed the original one uh, 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 for me. But this is the, the Aaron Sheik and Tony Atlas in uh, uh, Japan. You know? And somebody said, Tony, thank you for the Kamala drawing. Well, thank you too, show. Thank you. I'm glad to do Kamala. Kamala was a good friend of mine. A very good friend of mine. So Dan gone to do something. And try y'all hear me talking about this guy. I wrestled him a couple of times. This is Andre the Giant as the Prince's Bride. That's Andre the Prince's Bride. When I saw that movie, the first thing came to my mind. I said, no, no offense to Andre, but he fits the part. I mean, who else could have played that? Who else could have played that but Andre? I mean, he looked like he kind of belonged there, you know, which is amazing. Andre the Giant, right there. Look at that. The Prince's Bride. But for those who uh, don't like what I'm showing now, anybody out there that want me to do some work for them, then... Uh, I'd be more than happy to do work for him. This is uh, another good friend of mine that I love very much. He had passed away. The America Dream, Dusty Rose, along with his two sons, Gold Dust, Cody, the world NWA world heavyweight title around a, a around his, uh, over his shoulder. And in the corner there, you can see his WWE Hall of Fame ring. These are Dusty, to me, he, what he told me was his greatest of uh, uh, being the people champion. He was the NWA world champion, the WWE Hall of Famer. And he, had to, to, he, he was lucky enough to see his two sons, Gold Dust and Cody, become superstars in the wrestling world. Fantastic. This is a pitch idea for another one of my friends. He was opening up a, opened up another store down in uh, Florida, so he could. So I wanted to give him something because he always been such a great friend of mine. We always got along well. We worked out in the gym together and 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 everything. So uh, uh, what I what I end up doing, I drew his picture for his new show, the uh, uh, the Beat Shop. In Florida. Who is this, Tony? That's Huck Hogan. Oh, you talking about Hulk? I wasn't in the room. Yeah, yeah. That's his beat shop. Now, you're going to see a signature at the top. Now, that's a copy of Hogan's signature. I sent Hogan the original drawing that I did. And he loved it. And, and I sent some prints to Hogan, and I asked him if he signed a couple of them for me. So he did. He signed a couple of them. But, of course, you know, I kept 
the, the print that he signed, but it made the picture look so good that uh, what I did, I, I took it, just left it. Uh, when I make the prints, I just left it on there, you know, because I figured, you know, it looked real good. You see how, how, how that matches everything? And Hogan is so smart, he used a blue pen because the whole picture, if you notice, is red, white, and blue. So if, so he didn't sign it with a black pen. He signed it with a, 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 with a blue pen that, that really, really, really made everything look good. Then also I got here. Tony, you're like a walking QVC over there with all those pictures. Now, before I show this picture, can anybody name Tony Atlas three greatest achievements in the WWE? What is Tony Atlas three? Each time you got released. Greatest achievement in the WWE or WWF. Each time you get released. That no? Anybody know? I'm gonna count down. I think I know. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Okay, Tony Atlas, three greatest achievement. Okay, somebody say winning a tag belt. Okay, that's one. Okay, that's one. So one person got one. What is the other two? What is the other two greatest achievement of Tony Atlas in the WWE? Winning the world title belt is most definitely one of them. All right. Can anybody think of the last two? I think Fox Press Slam, Slam and Hogan. One of them. Okay, we got two. We got two. So I, that's two correct. I think. What is the third one? I There's think, one more. I think Fox Guy 67 got it right, Tony. What did he say? Hall of Fame. Hall of Fame. Are those, exactly. Look and at that's that. the drawing. That's the drawing. Cameraman, show them people so they know they're right. They are exactly right. There go me, Press Slam, and Hulk Hogan. That's me and Rocket Johnson holding the world tag team titles and the WWE Hall of Fame ring. These are Tony Atlas' three greatest achievements in the WWE. And fans, y'all know a lot about wrestling because y'all got every one of them right. Press Slam and Hulk Hogan was a great achievement for me. The winning the world tag team championship with Rocket Johnson was definitely a great achievement for me. And and yeah. becoming the WWE Hall of Famer is also a great achievement. Now, when Tony Atlas was no longer Tony Atlas on the WWE, what what other name did Tony Atlas wrestle under? Oh, I can't wait for this one. What name did Tony Atlas wrestle? Tony, I'm going to try and help the cause. I'm going to scoot off camera, even though don't the fans him, can. Don't give them no hint. Oh, I, I would never, I would never think to give don't them a give hint. Don't give them no hint. We have our good friend in the back that chooses to remain anonymous tonight. That's being a big help. I hope he knows how much he's appreciated. He, what's that? No, no, no. It's still right there. I'm just trying to. Look, they can't see you. The only no, you could, you couldn't see it. What? Uh, oh, somebody got it right. Go back, go back. He got it. Kevon got. No, oh. he says Saba Simba. Kevon got it right. Yeah. Saba Simba, the Black Superman, is exactly right. I'm working on a picture of the Black Superman. I don't have a drawing of, of of the Black Superman, but you are exactly right. Somebody got both of them. Uh, uh, at, at the bottom, he says Saba Simba, the Black Superman. Exactly. But the only drawing I got with me now is the one of Saba Simba. Tony, someone said your mic is off. Is there anyone else that can't hear Tony's microphone right now in the chat? Let us know. I can always give him mine. Or we, or our friend in the back can get him a new one. Yeah. That's my Dan, is Tony going to answer questions? Yes, Michael, he is. But, Tony, I think your chin keeps rubbing up against the microphone a little too much. All right. All right. Well, Lisa V., we can give you an address to send in a payment with the money order, if you like. Now, now in the wrestling world, who is Tony Atlas lookalike? In the wrestling world, Tony Atlas lookalike. Someone that when you look at, you think of Tony Atlas. 
I remember you were offended what, when I what said are the names? Zeus. What are the names there, Dan? What did it say? Uh, Butch Reed, Big E. Y'all give up? Did they give up? Do you give up? Do, do you guys give up on who Tony's lookalike is? <laughs> I had to play a joke on him. This is Lily Lee Moore at Spark. He was my favorite on Star Trek when I was a kid. So I had to draw his picture. And thank you all for playing along with me. You know, sometimes sometime Tony Atlas is full of it. You know, so I got to throw in a little joke every now and then. Little Lee Moore, Spark. I don't see the resemblance there, Tony. You don't think know. I look like him? I was going to say Shrek. But what about, what me Shrek? Shrek. Shrek, you, you know, think the, I look like Shrek, The huh? green guy. <laughs> Maria, how are you tonight, kiddo? I've seen you all over Facebook. I hope you're doing good. A lot of names I have never seen before, which is nice. PK, no, those are draw. Well, what Tony has in his hands right now, PK, those are prints of his original drawings. Uh, now, one more question, Dad. All right, what do we got? Okay, who are the four people that is on top of Mount Rushmore? Who are the four individuals on top of Mount Rushmore? And I wait. Who um, are the four people Vince on top Le of Mount Rushmore? Vince, Linda, Shane, and Stephanie. Well, no, no. It's for them to answer that. Now, who he said? All right, Ken, our good friend Ken, he wants to know, was a bodybuilding contest the only time you competed against or with his hero, Ricky Steamboat? Competed against? Did, other, did, did you ever wrestle Ricky Steamboat, or was it just bodybuilding? I never wrestled Ricky Steamboat, no. Weren't you in the same bodybuilding no, competition? No, no, no. Ricky was a class under me. He, he won the Mr. North Carolina. I was in the Southern Hemisphere. See? Well, he was a class beneath me. I won the Mr. North Carolina, so I, I couldn't win it again. So, Ken, to answer your question, they've never – did you ever wrestle Ricky in the ring? No. No. Only as a part. We want to call baby faces the good guy. Nicholas Volper, if you're interested in original drawing, send us an email. I'm going to put the address right here. Did on anybody the ever get, you. Did anybody ever tell me who are the four people on Mount Rushmore? Oh, all right. You guys at home, who are the four people on Mount Rushmore? I don't want to ruin it. Who are should the four we, people that make up Mount Rushmore? Should we play the, uh, the Jeopardy theme song? Huh? Should we play the Jeopardy theme song? Did it, nobody came up yet? Paul, what did he say? John Lennon, Paul McCartney, George Harrison, and Ringo Starr. Uh, <laughs> Mount Rushmore? Yeah. No. Tony, you got to try and make sure the microphone doesn't scratch against your the shirt. The four Tony. people... At Mount Rushmore, ah, oh, Bruno Sammartino, Nick Bockwinkel, Dusty Rose, and Harley Race. That's the Tony Atlas Mount Rushmore? That's the Tony Atlas Mount R Rushmore. Bruno Sammartino. Harley looks really good in that one. Huh? Harley Race? Yeah. Yep, yeah, Harley Race, uh, 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 Dusty Rose. And and Nick Buckwinkle. Nick Buckwinkle looks good. Dusty, Dusty, I think got a little bit extra forehead there. I don't know. No, he had that bushy hair when he was young. I tried to draw him when it was in the heyday. Oh look, Mr. Sarko himself, Matt Degnan has joined. Lisa V, I'm going to try and check my email now. As you can imagine, having all these screens open is kind of nuts. But I'm going to look as we speak as Tony continues to serenade you with humor. Wisdom, insight, and artwork. How about that, Tony? The, every one of these drawings that Tony is showing you right now tonight is available for 40 plus shipping and handling. You help keep the wrestling legends working. You help keep the lights on in this studio so we can bring Tony back. We're trying to bring Tony back live in November, Tony. Is that correct? Is that correct, Tony? Well, you lost because I don't no, know. No, I, I understand uh, that, Tony. Uh, okay. What I'm saying. <laughs> Are we trying to bring you back in November? Yes. All right, Lisa. All right, you want the Saba symbol one. 
Um, let's see. All right, Lisa, I'm going to email you back direct, then Tony and I are going to go back to YouTube. You can send payment. What do you know? Mom, I'm getting tired. <laughs> oh, oh she, she'd have to send a money order. Okay. Um, yeah. to, well, Tony, you can sign the, um, the print and I can mail it to her when she comes. Six, include your address, the print you wanted. All right. So Lisa, I'm going to send that back to you. And where is she? All right. Now we'll go back here, Tony. All right, Lisa, did okay. you want, hold on one sec, though. Lisa, on the Saba Simba drawing, do you want your name on it, or do you just want Tony to sign it? That's up to you. Just let us know. All right, back to these great fans. Greetings from Worcester, Massachusetts. Jonathan Dusty, that's a great wrestling city. Who? Mike Emerson says, tell Tony that a fellow Virginian said hello. All right, Lisa wants you to sign the Saba symbol one just with your name on it. Okay, I got another question. All right, what do you got, Tony? For trivia, who had time? the had in the in the seventies and eighties? Well, I would say the seventies. Who had because they had a lot of great bodies in the in the in the nannies. Uh, in the seventies and eighties, who had the best physique in wrestling? In the seventies and eighties, who had the best physique in wrestling? Rick B. says Tony Atlas. He is uh, exactly right. Oh, look at that, Tony. Look at you whoring yourself out. He is uh, exactly right. Look at that, brother. Derek Gunn said Billy Graham. Billy oh, Graham Billy said Graham number one. Billy Graham number one about him in a contest. How do you know? Because I, I know Billy. He, he competed in the Mr. America. He got best arms, but he didn't yeah. win the overall. Billy Graham's got more gas going on Billy, than him than the mobile gas Billy station. Graham, Billy Graham participated in the Mr. America, and he lost. Okay? All I right. won. Noah Boland said Kerry Von Erich. Nope, he never won a bodybuilding contest a day in his life. AA says, LOL legend. How are you, AA? Nope, he never competed. You All have right. to compete. If you can't win a title when you never compete. You have to compete and, and go against other bodybuilders in order to become to in order to become that. Put one of the Saba Simba prints out for a lady named Lisa. We're going to sign that for her and ship it out. Michael Rubin says Snooker and Orndorff and Kerry Von Erich. What? Jeez. No, because Ricky Steamboat beat Snooker in the midst of North Carolina. <laughs> Paul Orndorff never competed against anybody. I competed against the best in the world. All right, Lisa. That's the difference. So you can always talk about what you think, but then when you get judged by others, yeah. none of them held titles. Now, Tony, I really think it would look... What they think Mr. USA mean? It means United States bodybuilding champion. That was Mr. USA World. It was a bodybuilding championship. All right. You Tony, understand now? Tony, do you think it would make it any easier if I decorated the set with these prints? No, there's too many of I them. Mean, too, too many. All right. There's All nobody right. to work the camera, see? Uh, <laughs> now, this is, this is me, Harley Race, and Dusty Rose... At the Atlanta City Auditorium wow. in Atlanta, Georgia, 19 NWA, 1978. If I move my finger out, you can see. And I'm press slamming Harley Race. My tag team partner is uh, Dusty Rhodes. Dusty Rhodes looks and, like And he... we took on me and Harley Race, uh, me and Dusty Rhodes team up against Harley Race and one half of the Minnesota record crew, Ole Anderson. Dusty Rhodes looks like he has breasts like Vicente Ray Wasco in that one. Well, AA, thank you for watching us all the way over in London. We appreciate it. Well, there were a lot of guys that had great builds. Me, myself, I think Bobby Lashley nowadays, I, I agree with you. He, he's got a great physique right now. No, but Bobby Lashley lived, he wasn't around in the nannies in that 70s, 80s. The question was the 70s and 80s. All right. Don't get angry. Everybody got Don't a great angry, body now. Tony. Come on. Everybody got a great body now. All right. Not everybody, me. Not me, though. Not me. Everybody in wrestling got a great body now. Now, Thank here's you. one that I that I did for a friend of mine. 
Fit Finley put the domino strip uh, with Ray Mysterio. Wow, that's nice looking, Tony. Fit I've never Finley, seen that one. Fit Finley and, and, and uh, 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 Ray Mysterio when they had a match. Tony, how tough was John Studd to work with? Michael Rubin wants to know. He wasn't. He wasn't tough. No. All right. He was easy to work with. Yeah, he wasn't. All right. Well, fans, if you're not familiar with what we do, if you're new to the fun that we have here, every Tuesday night at 9 o'clock, Tony joins us for Wrestling Insiders at your house, followed by our big Monday night Raw review at 10 o'clock. So Tuesday nights we have a double header. Subscribe to our channel. It is absolutely free. And if you could give us a big thumbs up tonight. Someone gave us a thumbs down. We still love you. We can still be friends. And I, but... got, and I got one more thing to show the people. What do you got? I uh, can only imagine. What do you got? Woo! Tony Atlas Woo! and the Nature Boy. Woo! And that was, at the, that was in Atlanta, Georgia, at the Omni. Rick Flair versus Tony Atlas. And this was a cover of uh, Wrestling Illustrated. Most of my pictures, I, I, I look in books and I see pictures of wrestlers. And, and so what I do, I, I, I draw them. That's a good idea, Tony. That's a great way to yeah. get it. Yeah. Hey, that, Mr. Uh, Cake Ave. How are you, brother? Cake Avenue. I'm sorry. This is a familiar face. Yeah. Robert O'Neill, welcome. Larson Markov. Oh, no. He said, draw a picture of the gay Adrian Adonis. I don't think you're going to do that one. You want to draw Adrian, Tony? Who? Adrian Adonis? Yeah, I don't care who I when draw. He was, I like when he was a little funny? Yeah, I draw Adrian. Don't make fun of the guy. He, you, 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 that's what he wants. That's Patrick, oh, hey, Tony, Patrick Garman says, Tony, do you do color drawings or oil paintings? Uh, I, I, I don't do oil because it takes too long for it to dry, and it would take me too long to give it to a person. So what I do, I, I use markers. I do stuff to go... When people send you their money, they don't want to wait a month for it. Patrick, he doesn't want to make you wait too long, so he does not do oil paintings. No, no, because you have to wait on that. Because when you put oil paint on, you have to wait and let it dry. Slick Rick B., the president of the Boston Wrestling Sports Fandoms, he gave us a big woo! Thank you, Slick Rick, for being with us constantly. We love you, brother. Without you, we can't do these types of shows. His machine, does he have the Amanda Storm drawing? Do you have that one, Tony? Uh, not with me. All right, that might but be. But I do have one. That might be best now, for Now, here, for all you that watch Dark Side of the Rain, and if y'all notice, doing Dark Side of the Rain, they, are, uh, uh, they show me drawing the uh, Dark Side of the Ring. And, and, and this is there you the go. drawing. Hold it up, Tony. This no. is the drawing that I did for <laughs> Vice TV. A, a bruiser brought it on dark side of the ring. And that's a beautiful picture right there. That's one of your, another one of your better ones. Yeah. I really like that one. Yeah, that's what I did for dark side of the ring. Right, don't get too angry, Tony. I'm just switching screens for a second. Uh, <laughs> whoa. Whoa. I think you just gave coronavirus COVID-20 with that one, Tony. Jesus. All right. Let's <laughs> All right. What else? Uh, Tony Atlas, have you ever worked with Ronnie Coleman? I don't know who that is. Ron Coleman is uh, was Mr. Olympia. Oh, did you ever wrestle him? I didn't know he wrestled. Oh, <laughs> I guess the answer, it was Mr. That's the answer to that one. Dark Side of the Moon, Holly pulling down Tony's pants. Yes, right. That's right. That's a true story. Dave Martin, how did Ric Flair's chops feel, Tony? How did his what? How did his chops feel? You know. Tell them back in that day, that was everybody done that. Wasn't everybody just felt that. Y'all, y'all just saw old time wrestler wrestle for the first time. You got lucky. The, the hardest chop the round was Sweet Hanson. Sweet Hanson. <laughs> oh man, Sweet Hanson. And all day to drink, all day to drink, make you pee on yourself. All right, Mr. Chop was nothing compared to Andre and Street Hamster. Mr. KKF, bless you, Mr. And Wahoo, USA. And Wahoo McDaniel, brother, used to hit, used to hit Rick and Steamboat so hard, he used to bust blood vessels in his chest. I tell I don't have, I don't have a, a, a Amanda Storm drawing, but I do have a Master Sandy. Attila wants to know: Do you draw one? Did you have one of Mil Mascaris? Who? Mil Mascaris. Who the hell is that? No mascaris. No, I don't. All right. Well, 
They're interested. They could request it. Reggie Jackson, not to be confused with the Yankees and Oakland A's another, player. Like Tony Atlee, press slam. How strong was Bruiser Brody? Very strong. Somebody asked, somebody asked about King Kong Bundy. I got a King Kong Bundy. Tony also press slam King Kong Bundy. Yep. Dan, ask him about Adonis pulling a knife on him. Was that real? Did Keith Frank pull a knife on you, Tony? Who? Did Adrian Adonis pull a knife on you? Probably. Probably. I don't remember. That's not something brother, one would usually brother, forget. Brother, back in them days, I was so fucking stoned, I didn't know what anybody was doing. All right. Well, I guess that we're going to have to put that in the maybe category. <laughs> yeah. Is it true Art Nelson threatened to shoot Tony? Yes. Why did Art Nelson threaten to shoot you, Tony? Well, when I first started, I didn't know wrestling was what it is. I thought it was for real. They didn't break wrestlers in the way they do now. I mean, they would put you in what they call a shoot match. Yeah. To see if you if you could take us. So I'll team t- up with with uh 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 Bob Breggers. Now, Bob Breggers was in that plane accident with Ric Flair and the Crockers and Johnny Valentine. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, and Johnny Valentine. This is me press slamming King Kong Bundy in Allentown, Pennsylvania. Allentown, Pennsylvania. Tony Atlee press slamming King, uh, King Kong Bundy. Bundy was 460 pounds. But anyway, uh, I thought wrestling was, was, you know, was, was legitimate. So I was wrestling for real and all these other guys, but they, they was working. So I watched Bob Brigham throw guys around. I go in there and try to throw them. And uh, uh, what is it? Uh, from E. Yeah, yeah. Master Sandy for, for, for EWA in Lewisburg. Yep. Rick he saw you moving. wrestle, Tony. Rick saw you wrestle Master Sandy in EWA. She that's was right. legit. That's right. Yeah. Trigger Trey. How are you, brother? Trigger Trey is another one that's always with us, Tony. Yeah. Lawson is always with us on Tuesday night. Yep. Yad Ape is on, around often enough. I know that name. Tanisha Smith. Hi, Tony Atlas and Dan. Tanisha, welcome. Thank you for joining up. us. Kevin Goshi. Tony, did you ever think of being a pro bodybuilder when you were into bodybuilding? No, because what happened, the wrestling took, took over so much. And the promoters hated it. Every time I went to a, a bodybuilding contest, the promoter hated it. They, they told me you had to make a choice, Tony. So I used to slip, a, slip away and go to contests because the promoter never wanted me to do it because they was always afraid that I would quit wrestling and, and uh, 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 go into uh, 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 bodybuilding. All right, but so- anyway, back to the story about uh, uh, what was the question the guy asked me about? Which one? Oh, about, about Art Nelson wanted to shoot Oh, yeah. Me. What happened with but, Art Nelson? But, but anyway, I grabbed Art Nelson in a headlock, and I squeezed, and I squeezed. But it took me a week to get a, a hold on him, so I wasn't going to let go. So what ended up happening, we got back to the dressing room, and I, and I walked, was walked back in the dressing room, and these are Art Nelson words. He said, George, George Scott was the uh, uh, booker then. He said, you would have smartened that damn nigger up. Whoa. Because he nearly broke my jaw as strong as he said. He's too strong to, uh, for him not to know what's going on out here. So you would have smartened him up. So the funny thing about it, I knew very little about wrestling during that time. So George Scott said, we're told that we're going to teach you how to work. I said, I don't want to work. I want to be a wrestler. He said, no, no, no. And, I, and the boys teased me all that night because I didn't know the word work means know how to pretend to be a wrestler, but not really wrestler. Because I, I was an amateur wrestler, you know, all, all through uh, 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 junior high school and high school. So that's when they started training me to be a, 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 a professional wrestler. But first they wanted to see how tough I was. So in the old days, they would put you against what they call shooters. These are legitimate wrestlers. I mean, they're not fake, and they could kick the dog mess out of you any time that they want. And, and so that's how they used to do, guys. They always put you against tough and they used to stretch the hell out of you before you used to train, like Gene Anderson and Larry Sharp, Kim Paterno, and all these guys, Mr. Fuji. Now, the way Mr. Fuji used to train me, he used to get a six pack of beer. He got oh, a really? six, yeah, he get a six pack of beer. He got a Cadillac that was convertible. So you would run in front of his car. And every time he would throw a beer can at you, you speed up and you run until he finished the beer. 
And then he throw it, and when he finished that beer, he throw a beer can at you, and you slow down. That's how food you with with uh, uh, I would train you. Now, Gene Anderson and Ole Anderson, they, they was one of my trainers, and they would take me to the stadium, and they'd make me run the whole length of the stadium. You run up the steps, run across, run down the steps, run, run across, run up the steps, until you go around the whole stadium. How did you do that? The next day, they would have you doing like 300 jumping jacks. 300 push-up and 300 free squats. Wow. And then they would put you on the mat with other shooters, you know, like uh, uh, Boris Malenka, uh, oh, Carl boy. Gotch. Yeah, I mean, these guys what they call bone breaker. They were really, really rough guys. And if you came back the next day for training, Jump Y'all Dog tell a story about he came in, they were training me, and, and uh, Gene Anna said, is it true you black guys got hard head? So I said, I don't think so. And he took a hammer and hit me in the head with it. How did that feel? Oh, it felt wonderful, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely wonderful. Michael Allen Rubin wants to know, Tony, besides the one fight with Orndorff, did you get along with him? I heard Paul was moody. Well, first of all, it was not a fight. It never estimated into a fight. What happened was, and this is the truth, Tommy Rich tell the same thing. Brian Blair is a lamp piece. So whatever he, he tried to exaggerate everything, make himself look good. Kind of disappointed in Brian Blair when he tells the story. What happened was we was in Ohio and we were going from Dayton, Ohio to Columbus, Ohio, and uh, Paul Longo, whoever he was riding with, didn't want to make a call, so they left him at the building. So he asked Tommy Rich, "Can I ride back with you guys?" And Tommy said, "Yes." Well, I, earlier the other day, I picked up some barbecue ribs, and I and I and, and because back in the old days they didn't have these. 24-hour stores. The only thing was open back then was a 7-Eleven. And I didn't want the bologna blowout. The bologna blowout was a sick pack of beer, bologna, and cheese and on, sandwich, on white yeah. Wonder Bread, a sandwich. So I wanted to be ribs. So I said, well, I got a microwave in my, in my room. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this microwave. I'm going to put it in the microwave. So boy, Paul got in the car in a grumpy mood. There you go. What the hell is all this, <laughs> that smell? And I said, they're my ribs. He said, well, I'm going to throw this shit out. I said, Paul, you throw my ribs, I'm going to throw you out with them. Well, Paul got pissed off. You threatening me? You threatening me? He started hitting the back of, of the car, and Tommy is driving. So he said, pull the fuck over, pull the fuck over. So Tommy said, come on, guy. He said, pull over. He kept hitting the back of the seat, kicking the back of the seat. So fairly, Tommy Rich pulled over. When Tommy pulled over, Paul jumped out the car first. I'm getting out the car. As I'm getting out the car, Paul tried to suck the punch me. Well, I leg dive it, I took him down, I put him in a crater. Now, a crater where you wrap your arm around the guy's neck, then you grab his uh, the, his opposite leg from you and bring his leg up to your head and you lock it. Then you take your leg and wrap it around the other leg. It's a pity move to call it a crater. Anybody did amateur wrestling know what I'm talking about. Well, I held him there for a while and I asked him, do you give up? He said, yes. So I let him go. We got back into the car. Tommy Rich looked over and said, Tony, you know, you're bleeding. And I said, no. He said, yeah, you're bleeding. So I pulled down the sun visor, and I looked, and I had a bite, a bit, a bite mark on my ear. And uh, so Paul, uh, Tommy Rich said, Tony, you don't want to uh, go through life with your earlobe hanging. He said, you need to go to the doctor and get that sewed up. So I said, okay. So we went to the hospital. The guy stitched me up. He said, well, how do you get that bite? And I learned something that night. I said, uh, I said, one of the wrestlers bit me. He said, you were bite, bitten by a human? I said, yeah. He said, well, I have to keep you overnight, because, and we have to give you a tetanus shot, you know, because a human bite is the worst bite you could get. Not a so not they a gave me the tetanus shot. The next day, Tommy picked me, up, uh, picked me up from the hospital, and that was it. But it wasn't a fight. Paul swung at me. I leg dived him, took him down, and put him in a crater. That was the whole fight. Noah Bolin is an unbelievable fan tonight, Tony. He's taken over the number one slot. Hell of a guy. Thank you so much for contributing. All of these great fans, Tony. We have 134 on YouTube right now, plus I have no, many, I have no idea how many on Facebook. Um, Trigger Trey's right. Let's get this up to 100 thumbs up, baby. Tony's going to be with us for a little longer. If you want to help with the Super Chats, if you want to buy some of his great artwork, He'll stay even longer and answer some of your questions. No. It's a, no. What does that say? Which one? Right there. It's Tony, if, if you want to get five minutes with Blam Blam, yes, I will. So, hey, oh, yeah, they, is, yeah, they is it true that Tony picked 
a face walk in. Is it true? Land. Is it true that Tony pitched a face walking storyline to WWE? No, no. All right. Well, that Kevin answers that Cole, question. Tony Leslie Ring. Robinson. This is a name I don't think when we've seen for a while. Were tag team in 1980. Oh, they're going by so fast. I can't read that down fast. All right. Well, why don't I you read? You just zoom it through. I'll everything. read them to you. How about that? We'll make it easier to, to get these. People. No, I'm not it's doing like it. They're doing it. Oh, the computer does that. The computer does it, not me. Well, it's like a freaking assembly line here. Uh, did any of the current divas walk on Tony? No, no. Tony, when you and Ted RCD were a tag team in 1985, that was an awesome tag team. I don't remember you with Ted RCD. Yeah, yeah, world class. Oh, okay. Yeah. Lawson says Brian Blair is a liar. Yes. All right, Leslie Robinson, Dan and Tony, number one. Thank you. The Crazy Cat, Abdullah the Butcher, wrestling with him. Any thoughts? Well, Ab Abdullah made both me and Tommy Rich. They brought Tommy Rich in for uh, uh, to go around with Abdullah to put Abdullah over. And what ended up happening, with, with Abdullah started beating on Tommy, all the fans started coming to uh, – Coming to the ring, so Ole got scared. I was wrestling on the hood then. I would call myself Black Atlas. I, I wore a mask. So Ole Atlas said, well, go out there and run Abdul off before the fans get to him. So I ran to the ring real fast, to, uh, and Abdul was scared. He said, slam me. So I forgot to tie my mask from behind, so I picked up Abdul and I slammed him, and my mask came off. And oh. then the next day, they teamed me and Tommy Rich up. And then we became a cessation after that. There was it was TNT, Tony and Tommy, and we wrestled all up and down on the Georgia Champion wrestler for um, 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 many years. All right, Will K says he's praying for your wife, Tony. Thank you, brother. I appreciate that. All right, uh, Spike McGee. Did you ever work with Don Morocco? Yes, I got pictures of me with Don. I press slammed him too. Did Vince ever? Did Vince McMahon ever try to blow you up at the gym, Tony, like he did other wrestlers like Mark Henry during any of your WWF runs? No, because Vince knew he couldn't do that. Vince never do. He never. He never pick a fight that he know he can't win. All right. Lanny Poffo loved the baloney blowout. The, he said what? Lanny Poffo loved the baloney blowout. <laughs> Fox guy, thank you, brother. You're another one of the team here. You're another member of the family. Uh, I love hearing, I love, I love uh, Pook Ninja. I love hearing Tony tell stories about wrestling. Very entertaining guy and a great storyteller. While I pause the chat for a minute, does everybody in this room know that we're here every Tuesday night at 9 o'clock with brand new episodes? What did that one say? Liz Robinson, how? Leslie how Robinson, one? how come Tony and Tommy Rich never won the NWA World Tag Team titles? We did. You were NWA Tag Team yeah, Champions? Yeah, I got, I got a picture of me wearing the belt. Yeah. Georgia or the World Tag Team Champions? No, no, we was NWA World Champion. Yeah, yeah, you were? Were, yeah, I got pictures of it. I'll bring a picture next time I come. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I, Leslie, I don't know. I, I'm siding with you, brother. Yeah, we uh, were NWA Champion, me and Tommy Rich. Joseph, yeah. don't call him David Reese. Where did he go? How much could you bench at the age of 21, Tony? Do you remember? 575. Uh, 575. PK, which male wrestlers got fresh with Tony? Pat Patterson? No. No. Whoever did, someone, you, who, you mentioned it in one of the shows. Someone tried to fondle themselves in front of you in the middle of the night while you were sleeping. Oh, a lot. Oh, 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 Birdhead Jones. Birdhead Jones tried to violate Tony. Ken, yeah. I, Ken, do I literally not eat anything after six or seven o'clock? Wait, hold on one sec. I lost it. I heard that's how you lose weight effectively. Thank you. Is it best for Ken to lose weight by not eating anything after six or seven o'clock? No, Tony? eat a big breakfast. That's you eat the... a big. You be, eat a big. Uh, the, see, your body is like a car. If you fill the tank up with gas early in the morning, by the end of the day, the tank is full. If you fill the tank up at nighttime, you wake up in the morning, the tank is still full. So the body can't burn the calories, so it stores the the, the calories. Uh, 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 as fat. So anything you eat after 8 o'clock normally would turn into fat, unless you work at a night job or something, then, then, then that's different. But your metabolism slows down after uh, 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 after certain, uh, and you're not going to burn the calories. So everybody that is heavy, they don't eat breakfast. 
Every overweight person do not eat breakfast. Ain't that something? And you Mark know Henry never ate I, breakfast. I don't eat breakfast. That's right. That's is that what my happened. problem? I'm, is that why well, yeah, I'm because, overweight? Because, because what, what ended up happening by the end of the day, you're starving, so you stuff yourself in the, the day, but you're not going to do anything to burn the calorie. If you eat a big breakfast, you, you got all day to burn that calorie. My, everybody I know that's overweight do not eat breakfast. All right, Tony. We've, we've got eat, a, eat a big breakfast. Then you ain't so hungry at the end of the day. All right, Tony. We have uh, over 160 on YouTube alone right now, plus the people on Facebook. Why don't you go through and show the fans the drawings that you have again right now for the new folks that are coming in? Tony's artwork is available right now for $40 plus shipping. You're going to help keep professional wrestling legends working. You can also use that great Super Chat button, baby. It works. It helps us bring Tony back. We want to have Tony in studio again live in the month of November. Is part of the Paul Bear Holiday Headlocks Toy Drive. Uh, let's see. What else do we have? Matt Degnan wants to know, who was Tony's favorite tag team partner? Tommy Wildfire Rich. All right. Amanda Thrasher. Love this. I used to watch World Class with my grandpa. Got me hooked on wrestling at a young age. Tony was one of my favorites. Amanda, look at some of this great artwork. If you want to reminisce about the days with grandpa and World Class, go through them, Tony. you got the Road Warriors. You got the Saba Simba one that I helped you correct because you spelled it wrong. <laughs> I like that one. Tony slamming King Kong Bundy, May the 2nd, 1981. The Allentown Fieldhouse, Allentown, Pennsylvania, for you PA fans out there. Let's catching up with the. My favorite. Which one do you got? Oh, Master Sandy walking on Tony and stepping on his face. And I got the Mr. USA suit on. Steve Simmons, as you mentioned, rest in peace animal, Joe Laurinaitis. Uh, B. B. Mick, Mick, uh, B. Mick Muzzick. Uh, we're going to have a special on Road Warrior Animal coming up over the next couple of weeks on one of our Tuesday night episodes. There you have Tony's magnificent 11 by 17 print of Bruiser Brody that he made for the dark side of the oh, ring yeah. show. Oh, yeah, somebody said, tell Tony, ask Tony about his shoot with Saito. Michael Allen Rubin, yes. What about the shoot with Mr. Saito? Uh, there were fights almost every night with you and Mr. Saito. Yeah, well, Saito, Saito wouldn't sell for me in the ring, so we got back to the dressing room. That we, we got into a fight, and I was raised, if I don't beat you the first, the first day, I'll come back and fight you again the next day. So we fought for about three days. Fanny and Vince Sr. called us both into the office. Said, if y'all fight, y'all guys fight tonight, I'm going to fire both of you and go home. He said, if y'all want, he said, I want y'all to sell it this, shake hand and make friends. So we did. All right. But, but we fought three days straight. Three days straight we fought. Every time I saw him, I jumped him. Tony, did you ever press Crusher Yurkoff, Big Bam Bam Bigelow? I, keep, I got to look at the old matches. You I know I wrestled. You don't I remember? Beat, him? I beat Bam Bam Bigelow for uh for the 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 the, 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 the uh, world class TV title. And believe it or not, my my debut, the first match I have in world class was against Bam Bam Bigelow, and I won the title from it as a black Superman. Wow, Attila Tony ever returned to Virginia, and I just bought two Tony Atlas T-shirts from Pro Wrestling Tees. Oh, good. Well, he's going to be looking really sharp at least twice a week. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you for that, Attila. Another great fan that we see here on these. Uh, what did I say, Tony? What did, what, what? Tony, what did, what did you, you think, think about Ahmed about Johnson? Ahmed Johnson? Yeah. I never knew him that well. He had a very short run from yeah, 95 yeah, I, I, through early 98. I, I never really knew him that well because I, I was not with the WWE at that time. All right, Glenn, not Glenn. Tony, what are your thoughts on Booker T? Why was he never WWE champion? He was a great worker and had the experience and tools to be. I think Booker T did pretty good myself. You don't necessarily have to have to get a title to do good in the business. He still well, employed with he, them. He, he was the quote-unquote world champion in WWE, but yeah, I guess yeah, technically WC, speaking, w, no. I, I think Booker T did very, very well for himself. There was a lot of people that didn't win the title that did that that did great did just as good as those that did win titles. You know, look at Roger Johnson; he became world tag team champion with me, and then after that, it was over for him. So you know, it 
Tony, I'm, what was your max bench press nowadays? You still look legit, brother, from Rick B up in Maine. Well, well I used to do 650, as, as y'all normally do. But right now, I, 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 I'm afraid of getting hurt. So I would go up to 315 or 365 uh, for uh, Vice TV. I did 405, but, but, I, but I don't, I try, I, I'm scared to go there anymore because if I pull a muscle or, or hurt myself, there is no recovering from it. So I try to not to do a lot of weight anymore. To I'm, me, I'm to, a senior citizen now, bro. No, you're not. I am. I just hit 40. Tanisha Smith, Tony Atlas is a true artist. I still draw her in stick figures. Now, you know what? Ladies and gentlemen, for all our friends here, Tony, there's something about special about today that you don't even remember. Do you want to know what that is? 27 years ago tonight. Me and the Sheik met you here with Tony Rumble. Oh, well, see, so you do remember. Yes. <laughs> 27 years ago tonight was my first night in the world of professional wrestling. 27 years ago tonight, I met Tony for the first time what, in the Iron Sheik for the Rizzo, first time. Which always, one? Always, why did you leave as Sava? What did they say? Which one? Let's see. Sava Simba. Where is that one? They answer these questions. And why did you leave as Sava Simba by... Ibzan Arroyo. Why did I leave? Yeah, why did you leave as Saba Simba? It wasn't up to me, it was up to Vince. All right. I'm not the promoter. Me, myself. He says we need easels. I'm telling you, brother, you're right. When we bring him back for the next live episode, I'm going to try and do something. Some shelves for the painting. What, so what the guy said, to me, myself, he said. Yeah, need easels. Right. Tony Atlas versus Roy Gordon. I think, Tony, if you ever saw Roy Flash Gordon, You'd be impressed. I believe he's out of Chicago. Right. Uh, he's got his red hair. He's a fantastic athlete. I'd love to have him here no, in Boston. Yeah, uh, I don't know if you know Roy Gordon, that, me, myself, but tell him we said hi. What'd good, you say? Good, good monkey. Goon Guy Monkey. These live shows are awesome. Huh. Well, if you guys love him, like I said, get a drawing. Hey, the drawings so are they, available they, right now. Did, $40 hey, plus probably. shipping. The wrestling show He's going to be back in, in November if you guys can help what, us what out. What did you say about rollout in 1998? Rollout in 19... Ask Tony if he remembers doing a public access wrestling show in Rhode Island in 1998. 1998? I don't even remember what I did yesterday. I'm going to guess you've done a lot of interviews. The Mystique Gypsy. I see you styling and profiling with the glasses, Tony. You're looking good. You go on and get it, Uncle T. <laughs> Oh, now this is sad. This is very true. I remember this well because I was with WWE at the Hartford Civic Center. Ibs and Arroyo, today, Yoko Zuna passed away 20 years ago. Any yeah, memories of him? There. No, I know you weren't there, but uh, any memories of Yoko? No, I, 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 I never met him. He was one of the Samoans. You know that. Yeah, but I, but I, but you, you didn't know, know him well. No, no. Rasco, Tony, when you did Legends House, are you guys being filmed 24 7? Or were you filmed only a few hours and free to do what you want? 24 wanted? 7. The cameras are on you 24 7. 24 7. All right, Rick B. Tony set a live record for YouTube. If anyone would know Rick B., it's you, brother. Let's give him a woo, Tony, together. Woo! One, no, two together. One, two, three. Woo! woo! Thank you, Slick Rick. Will Cortez. Tony Atlas is a national treasure. You should see his phone calls. Michael Allen Rubin. Tony, you are awesome. Tony, uh, uh, Glenn, not Glenn. How does it feel to be a part of WWE history? Do you ever think to yourself, man, I was a WWE superstar at one point, or was it more of a job? No comment. Oh. I, I don't know what to say about them. I mean, they, what, I mean, they, 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 they didn't do nothing. Well, when oh, you look, look at it. It said, Cash David, hi, Tony. Hello, baby. This guy from Runo, my town right here. See that? I see it. What did it say? Crash Davis. Hello, Tony, from your hometown, Roanoke, Virginia. Love you, man. Love you, too, brother. Thank you for bringing up, reminding me of home. Um, there was one, I, uh, Mr. Butakwa. Did you ever wrestle at Jack Witchie's in North Attleboro, Massachusetts? Oh, Lord have mercy. Yes. I can't resist that. I oh, love yeah. hearing about oh, Jack yeah, Witchie's. Jack Richards, yeah, yeah, of course, all of us did. Ripped wants to know, did you ever wrestle Dewey Robinson, the missing link? Yes. Do you think Lanny so Parker? I asked him before he was a missing link, too. Now, when he was Dory Roberts, yeah. Do you think that Lanny ever got excited seeing him on the I, beach? I no. All right. Do you know that about Dewey, though? 
I could he used not to tell love to you. go to you the new beaches. Stuff I know nothing about. Tony, show him more of the artwork. I'm trying, but no, show him the artwork. You're still holding up Spock. No, no, I'm trying to read what these people say. I can read them to you. But you what you don't, them. you just let them zip by to get a talk about somebody. Like, is it Galaxy? Was it King Kong Bundy? Who? Besides King Kong Bundy, who was hard to press, Slim? Who was hard to press? Yeah. Bundy was it. I mean, he's 460. All right. Who the hell is you going to beat 460? Oh, our buddy Kevin Tagliatella, Duke of Dorchester, Pete Doherty memories. This is a great guy right now. Love Pete Doherty. And I think, I don't know if you know, Tony, he's battling the big C. I didn't know that. Is our thoughts Fox, to the Duke. He's a Fox great guy. Regular price of WWE shop. Oh, no, that's the uh, the computer put that one up. Hold on, oh, Tony. Who put that, it up? The computer put it up automatically. Oh, shoot. Rick B. wants to know if the two queens, the two queens of the premieres are here, Smokey and Maria. If you ladies are here, let us know. Stan Callahan from Texas, brother. You do tremendous printing if you're the same Stan. I wish you'd go back to doing them because no one prints it better, brother. Uh, Larson Markov, I want to see Dark Side of the Moon. Michael McNulty, awesome show. Are these prints going to be up on eBay, too? If Tony wants to leave some of the prints, we can put them up on eBay, or you can order them now using the address on the top of the screen, bw at bostonwrestling.com. They're $40 each plus shipping. But, Tony, if you want to leave, I don't know if, how many of those prints you have. If you want to leave one of a couple of them, we can put them on eBay, whatever they want to do. Maria, 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 you remind me of a West Side Story. A leaderful. How do you feel of CM Punk's failed UFC career? We actually spoke about that before we went live tonight on an episode we taped. Yeah. What, 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 <laughs> what did you think is his question? <laughs> I don't know how to answer some of these questions. Well, what did you think? Do you think, do you think he comes across as a weakling? Do you think? Uh, do you give him credit for the having the balls they, to they, do it? They, you got to ask CM Punk that. All right. You ask me that to get inside somebody else's head. You know. Glenn, not Glenn. These questions are coming in too fast to give the man some time to answer each one. I can't even keep up. Love you, Tony, big man wrestling legend. Thank you, brother, for helping up. Again, fans, it's eight fifty-five now. Tony's going to go around nine. If you want to get some artwork, you got to let us know ASAP. We want to have Tony back in November. We want Tony here, not only here in November, but live in November. And don't I don't know forget, why they ask you a question when they cross me in it. No, I don't even know how they even ask the question. Did Tony know Leroy Colbert in the bodybuilding community? No. Did Tony ever work with Iceman King Parsons? No. He was a baby face. Lawson says, bring back Tony every night. We'd love to bring back Tony every night if you guys can help fund and make it happen. We're not looking to get rich. We just got to eat, baby. Um, Mr. Butakwa, did you attend Rocky Johnson's funeral? No. I wasn't invited. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that was invitation only. I was not invited. Ibzan Arroyo. Shoot, I just missed it. And I was starting to read it. Where were you? Ibzan, I just saw it, baby. How is I, I, this? Is means your wife? How is the lady you took to the Hall of Fame? She she's coming on, okay, not great, but okay. Uh, Michael Rubin, Tony, could she really beat Backlund in a shoot? Who? Uh, Who are you talking about? The Iron Sheik, Cosro. Nobody will ever know because Skoda threw in the towel. Well, come on now. Well, how are you going to know when, 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 when they stop the match? The match it, wasn't over. If you were out in Las Vegas and you were putting down a free hundred dollar bet on the the Chico Backlund, who would you put it on? No. You don't know. All right. That's what I'm saying. When he threw in that towel, we all wanted to know. The, 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 he took that away from the wrestlers. He took it away from the Sheik. He took that away from everybody when Scola threw in that towel. Nobody knew after that. We would all stand there watching, wonder who's going to win this. And the towel came in the ring. Melvin Cash wants to know favorite weed. Do you have favorite what? Weed. Do you have a favorite kind? A weed? What, like a hair weed? No, like uh, cannabis, I think, is what he means. Well, I don't have no idea about it. It's probably like been, what, 30 years since you smoked it? Eight, 1988. No. <laughs> 
Yeah. <laughs> Well, he can't so help I'll, you with that one. I'll don't, yeah. Mike Smith, hope we can get Tony and Marty back for great interviews. The good news is Tony's with us every Tuesday at 9. Marty is with us every Thursday at 9. We hope to have Tony back in November. Marty is going to be with us for three days in November. You say I'm moving to where? I'm moving to... Houston? Who's moving? Tony? No, I think last... Oh. Lawson says Tony is moving to Houston. He's not moving anywhere. Not that I, I know need him of. here, baby. KC Pelletier, is Puerto Rico still scary? No. No. Oh, right, no. that's good. We got some good friends in Puerto Rico. Yes. How about a pose off with Mr. Wonderful on TNT for best physique? You remember that on the TNT show, yeah, I Tony? Do. Yeah. Galaxy asks, what city had the best hotel rats? I don't like to uh, uh, prefer to women's in the derogatory term because we the wrestler was more of a rat than the women's was. All right, let, we let me, gotta stop. We gotta stop doing that to women. A woman come there, love you, support you, and then you call her a rat. It, it's not right. I, I never liked that term. People love to put down women. You gotta stop beating up on these females. What? I mean, maybe, maybe if I word it like this, Tony. What city had the best women? Well, it's not necessarily the, the, the city. In every city, you got women that get infatuated with men. And back then, the wrestlers used that infatuation. They used their power and their status to abuse women, verbally, physically. You know, and that's why the women are not respected in this world. Bumpy Johnson said, you and Rocky Johnson are the best tag team ever. Yeah, what did I say? I see something about CM Punk. CM Is that CM Punk did Tony ever join a team on a <laughs> what? No, no. <laughs> what the fuck? PK, no, that PK. Did Tony ever join a train on a rat? Was his question. Join a train? <laughs> yeah. Did you, did you ever go train on a rat with a bunch of other guys? I, I don't like them saying that. Well, about no, well, it's women. a different guy. I yeah, understand. yeah, I'm not going to answer anything that, 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 that dehumanized women. Atlas versus Duggan at Survivor Series 2020. Love it. I would love it. Hey! I would love it. Crazy, I would love it. Crazy haku story. Any crazy haiku story? We don't have time to tell a story here. All right, <laughs> come on. Fans, we are running out of time. Yeah, how long they think we're gonna be out here? If you wanted help, if you want to keep this going, baby, you got to order some out or a super chat within the next minute or two, or we gotta go. Hopefully, we'll have Tony back. You said in... run of the time, Las Vegas. No, I wrote running out of time. Where the money or opposite it? There oh. we go. The Mystique Gypsy. We're singing, Dan. Starting a music career, huh? Mystique Gypsy, baby. If my career was in, involved music, I'd be out in the street. Huh. I'd be in worse shape than Squiggy Jacquard. Glenn, not Glenn. Tony is so hilarious. Born in the 60s, he has that same old school personality. Tony, before we go, why don't you just show the fans the 11 by 17s one more time? One I'm more time. Through, I ain't even got through the first time yet. All right, well, show them to them so they can well, buy what, them. What do you think? You got to look at what you see there, Dad. You let me read what they're saying, and I you know, show but, me up. But, but as I'm talking, I'll be pulling the stats. Right, see, right. them the ones they already see. Big Ed from Thunder Valley. What's going on, baby, tonight? We love putting you over, brother, because I just love the name. Big Ant from Thunder Valley. Tony's got that Hulk Hogan 11 by 17 print available for $40 plus shipping. Who else do you got, Tony? We'll go on to the next one. Tony's got the Rhodes family. Dusty, Goldust, Cody, plus a WWE Hall of Fame ring print. 11 by 17. Tony's got Andre the Giant, the late great Andre the Giant in a Princess Bride outfit. That's a cool looking one. Tony's got himself in Cosmo Vizieri, my good friend, the Iron Sheik in Japan. Tony's drawing of The Undertaker. That's a really cool one. These are all available for 40 plus shipping. That one is Tony and Tommy Rich, also signed by Tommy Rich. So the Tommy Rich one, that would be, you said, 50 plus shipping, correct, Tony? Yeah. Robert saw Tony many years ago in Lumberton, North Carolina. We've run MWF live events in Lumberton, Robert. This is Tony's 11 by 17 drawing of John Cena. 
All right, next. <laughs> this is Tony and President of the United States upside down. Donald Trump. Joe wants to know, is Tony dry you, Dan? He's tried to, but the pencil breaks every time. All right, who else do we got, Tony? You and the president, who's up next? KC, I hope the match doesn't even happen, brother, but we're going to be doing a live watch-along for Hell in the Cell Sunday night at 7. All right, after, who else do you got, Tony? That's a real, that's a new one Tony made for the 50th anniversary of Jerry the King Lawler's wrestling career. That's a really nice one. You can add that to your wrestling wall of fame now. Do we have any more, Tony? Hawk and Animal, the Road Warriors. We actually have the original. The original that's going to be available on eBay. The Kamala one is gone, but we had Tony. We commissioned him for the Road Warriors one. This is that's original. beautiful. This is the original. So Tony's going to... You're going to oh, wait. Hold, you know what, Tony? That, that one right there, the, that's what an original Tony drawing looks like. That's this an is the original. This is the coppers. If you're interested in the original, let us know. If you're interested in the 11 by 17, let us know. Obviously, there's only one original, but we can make copies of the prints. Again, folks, how much for the original Goon Guy Monkey? Make us an offer before we put it on eBay, baby. Yadik, yes, you can buy originals of Tony's drawings. If you're interested, I'm going to put the, the email address up, and I, we can set you up with that gladly. We want to keep Wrestling Legends working. Tony has been out of regular appearances since March now. Do you know how hard that is for the legends, the veterans of this great sport, to have missed out on seven, eight months' worth of appearances? That's why we need Tony back in studio in November. We can do it with you. The artwork is available. The Super Chat is open. Tony, as we wrap up and wind down here as I practically lose my voice, any final thoughts for these great folks on YouTube and uh, Facebook tonight? Thank you all for the many, many years of support. And you all keep tuning in to Dan. Like I say, if you want anything, just contact Dan. I'll be, I'll be willing and able to do you all any type of drawing you want. And thank you so very much. Good night. We will see you hopefully in the month of November with Tony. We'll be back with three days of Marty Gennetti. And don't forget, subscribe to the channel. Tune in. We have three great talk shows every week. We do the TV review shows every week. We have a lot of fun. And we're going to be having live pay-per-view watch-alongs this weekend. Tomorrow night, we're going to be doing Impact Bound for Glory. Sunday night, we're going to be doing Hell in a Cell. And then at 11 o'clock Sunday night, Brutus the Barber Beefcake is back in studio. Again, if you want to buy Tony a drink, buy us a meal for all the hard work, thank you. AA, thank you for watching from London, brother. Tune in over there. Subscribe to the channel. Lisa V will be looking for the money order. Joe, uh, Joe, however you say that, be safe, Tony and Dan. Thank you for all we love you guys, folks. Cecil the Lion in the back, just lower the volume, please, brother, and we'll wind it down. Until we speak again, you and yours, be well.